What's up again? It's Oracle here with another tutorial on FL Studios. Today I couldn't really tell you what type of beat I'm about to be making, but um, it's gonna be fire. So let's do it. Let's move into it. Um, I'm gonna start with the D chord. Um, got a nice pad going. It's on uh, Nexus. I mean, you can find anywhere. This is what I was working with. I had already laid out a quick bass line that I thought of in my head. And it's pretty simple. So it just starts out like this. this to a third step and so I can get that that groove going and then and just copy the notes from the previous one if you're wondering how I got these channels right here showing the other piano rolls go into here and you get uh, here I'm sorry and go helpers enable ghost channels or you can click alt V and then you will be able to see the other channels within your step sequencer okay and okay. so I don't know how long this tutorial is gonna be because I'm just kinda stepping into this beat fresh and I really uh, no idea where I'm going with it so I'm going to be using a lot of Nexus just because it's normally my go-to I have a lot of other plugins I use but if I'm looking for quick sounds to throw together something in my head I like to use a plugin with a lot of sounds that I'm you know familiar with so So here you can see how the notes that I have that are highlighted on my scales are in the key of what I am playing, which I believe is a D minor scale. Which don't please don't quote me on that because I'm not I'm not exactly sure. I'm not I haven't taken the time to look at it. But to do that, you can click Detect Score Scale. So while you are playing, it'll show you the notes that are in scale. But please know that. It's always great to hit ominous notes that aren't in scale on the offbeat. Just make sure that you don't hit them on any of these lines, and then they will be great lead-up notes or like come-down notes that will flow into your beat. Like this, this could work. It's probably gonna sound shitty, but. get the gist of what I'm saying where you can add notes that are not in that scale just to lead up just make sure that they are on the off beat um, I believe they're called dissonant notes but anyway moving forward um, I'm probably not going to keep this deep brass sound it was just a preset that was already loaded up and it needs to be turned way down but um, we'll just start with that <laughs> go ahead and add another sound in here and I think I'm going to look around for an arpeggiator I'm just gonna pick a random one um, and we're gonna this 
this is just going to add some filler into our song that we have so far. And turn that down. And I'll probably pitch it up as well. And you can pitch things up by selecting all, control A, and then cl clicking control up, and it'll bring it up one octave. If you'd like to bring it up one note, you can click shift up, shift down as well. so I'm going to try to find a better one if I can. But once again, I'm trying to do this on the fly, so... just basically laid in I want to I'm going to go ahead and split these by channel and then go back into here and split them up you're wondering how I'm dragging and moving them over if you hold the shift key and click whatever you have selected you can move it or copy it I mean basic groove going. It's time to go ahead and add in some drums and we're just gonna find some good drums. Kind of like that kick so we'll stick with that kick and find a good snare. I kind of like the I kind of like the reverb on this, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this snare and add in the notes that I need. And if you notice, since I'm working in double time, I'm working at 130 BPMs, which would be somewhere around 65 beats per minute. Normally, if you were to make a track in real time, you would use all of these red notes. But since I'm working in double time, I space my snares out gives you more room to work with your kick and your hi-hats in the actual step sequencer if you work in double time. And it can get quite confusing that I'm working in double time because the tempo that you hear is this. But your actual tempo would be this. But anyway, that's just the basic concept of working in double time. And anyway, so we just add some basic kicks and snares.
doing this on the fly, so I'm really not going to get much into how I chop up inst individual instruments or, I mean, I'll do a little bit of work with the hi-hats and the snares, but as for right now, I'm just trying to give you guys a good sense of how I get a beat going. Alright, so now that we got some basic drums, um, we're going to go ahead and lay, we're just going to lay them in. I have this set up right now to have an 8-bar intro and then a verse, and it's not very extensive or anything, but we can hear what it's going to sound like with a little bit of drums. That was what it was. Sorry about that, guys. And I fucked up it one more time. Because um, that was not supposed to go on that sound. It was supposed to go on this sound. about that. Anyway, moving forward, here we go. So I'm probably going to change that pad noise because I just realized it's really annoying. So let's try to find another pad quickly. Um, just make sure it sounds good with everything else. not too bad so anyway let's go more into adding some things now anyway I have a base preset that I I, I love to use um, I made it in my uh, 3 3 o 3 x oscillator sorry um, and it is this sound and 
now it's going to be a little hard to follow if you don't have FL12 to get your settings to look as mine do. But if you notice, I have, um, I can't, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the individual names of these symbols, but I have the curly one, the curly one, and the straight one. You want to bring your course knobs down on all three. Now on um, this one, I have your mix level turned down to like somewhere around, I believe that's like 15%. And then this one turned up to, let's just say, 3 o'clock. And this one be around, say, 8.30. But other than that, it is just basic sound. I tend to go in here later when I'm developing my bass and turn on my porto mono, crank my slide up, and crank this to 32 if I plan on having my bass slide. Um, a lot of the times I don't want it to slide though it's all just a preference and um, so I'll turn that back down it just depends this is how I have my envelope set up oh that's not how I normally have my end envelope set up well you can have your envelope set up like this and this will give you a straight however long you hold the note that note will play but a lot of people tend to do another shape, which I call like the boot, and it's kind of like a hear that resonance on there, it, it, you know the the release and the sustain cause a lot of the resonance but uh, this is also a great shape because it gives you a little bit of that decay but anyway I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it simple and however long I hold the note will record that bass. So anyway, since I have a kick pattern, I'm going to go ahead and look at my kick pattern. I'm going to bring it down to my 808. And you can click control. Okay, so right now my notes are very small. It say they were all different sizes or whatever. You could always take them. You have them all selected and press Shift D, and that will make them all a, a real relevant size to whatever you have clicked here. I'm gonna go ahead and move to a step and press Shift D. Now all of my notes are one step long. So now I have my, my notes one step. And I also, what I want to, if you wanted to make them stretch them out as long as they could go, you can click Control L and that will legato them. And that will stretch your notes out. Sorry, FL12 has these ghost notes and I have yet to find out how to get rid of them. So sorry about those. Anyway, um, it would give you a, a sound something like this. But I know that these notes right here should be hitting on a D, and these start on F. go to F as well, but I believe these notes get raised to G. I'm going to lower this to a half a step. 
step so I can drag these back a little bit. jump notes that I'd like to hit somewhere and I'm gonna make them slide notes that for a baseline so far. I mean, we're, I mean, we can work with it further along, but I'm really not trying to spend all day on this. So let's go ahead and add some of that 808 in and just... That shift D will make all of your notes a specific size but I would like to so all of my my snares are hitting right here on this halfway point between each of these bars so I'm gonna have I'm just gonna go really simple and I'm gonna snap to I believe a half a step right now yes and I'm gonna chop these up with control U and that's gonna chop those notes I'm gonna add a little bit of velocity as well as it's great to add velo a little bit of velocity change on uh, set other notes, every other note, so we're moving forward. And a lot of the times on your rolls, when you're using half step and third step rolls, you want to make sure that you're doing things like, you know, high, mid, low, mid, low, high, or, you know, whatever. But a lot of the times on the faster rolls, I like to bring my velocity up. Um, but I'm going to go really simple and we're just going to go half step chops here and I believe it's six beat chops here and yeah I believe that's what I'm going to do um, I mean we'll, we'll hear how it sounds but it should just add a little 
a little bit of that flare that we were looking for. Once again, I'm using shift and moving what I have selected to copy over. And just to change up the end of the, the bar, I'm going to snap this to a mm, step and chop that up like that. Um, so, you know, that should just add a little bit. Alright, so now let's add in a couple more things. Um, it could be. with the shaker see how that sounds and I'm adding it on the down every down step down beat um, just to give it a little swing a little groove um, Just adds a little spice to it, what you're doing. And you can use this time stretch knob to stretch your samples out to how long you want them to be. They will change pitch unless you go in here and change it to auto. On your old FL Studios, I would change it to pro default, which was my favorite, but auto is what we will have to deal with on FL 12. So. That just gives us a little bit more. So now it's time to come in with, you know, we I think we need a melody. We need a nice piano, not a piano, but I'm going to use a piano to find the melody that I would like to use, and um, then we will go through, I'll, I will go through picking a sound quickly, um, or I could just, I guess I, I guess I could just pick a sound, so let's go ahead and just pick a sound, I'm going to go with a pluck, and I'll pluck hands up, bells, three, 
and I'm going to go ahead and go back to one of these that I have the ghost channels on. Okay, so now let's look. If you go in here and go to stamps, we're going to go find out what's in the D, made, D minor scale, which I know it's in the D minor scale, but I'm just showing you a way that you can show what is in the D minor scale. We'll do F minor. F minor is but we should use F major because they that'll keep it in key. So yes, this this is what we're working with. We got a D minor, A sharp major, F major, G minor, and that is what we're basically working with for the chords of our song. But I am not going to do that. I am going to just look at the notes that I have within this scale. I have a D and F and an A. So I'm going to work with the D the F and the A. Now here I have the F, A, and C. So I'm going to work with the F, A, and C, of course, respectively. And I didn't want this to be too depressing of a song, so I'm going to go up with my melody as opposed to going down, which I could do as well. Since on my other instrument I have an A sharp A drop, I'm going to go ahead and add that A sharp, A sharp, or A sharp, A drop as well to the end of this. So let's just hear how that sounds. I'm getting rid of that note. It is irrelevant.
got that melody, we're going to go ahead and go in here and we're going to create a another sound. We're going to get a lead, um, a nice... Oops, sorry, that was not very good. Sorry, I, I happened to accidentally open Photoshop. Maybe I can Photoshop something to open to this beat, you know what I'm saying? Alright, anyway. Now I'm going to go ahead and use something that is already a uh, FL Studios built-in plugin so that I can get the, so I can use the, uh, sorry about that, so I can go ahead and use the polyphony settings because if you don't have a plugin that, it, if it's not a FL Studios plugin then you won't be able to use these settings or they just won't have any effect. But if you do use an FL plugin, just know that mono will change the sound a lot. Here's the sound without mono. And that's because a lot of sounds in general, not just basic music theory, aren't supposed to be polyphonic, such as like, you know, Pianos, choirs, keyboard, you know, these aren't supposed to be mono sounds. But if you find a good mono sound, then we're in, you know, we're going to find a good a good lead. That's what we're looking for, something to, you know, lead the hook. And I'm going to go ahead and try to look in here and see if we can find any good leads. I'm trying to go as quick as I can, guys. I know, I'm sorry, this tutorial is dragging on and it's not that great of a beat, so... But I don't do these very often, so please rate, rate subscribe, and listen. Um, I promise I will get better at making tutorials. I'm just uh, new at this, so. But I'd really like a. And this is what I was talking about with the choir sounding very weird. Sometimes basses, basses can create ba great synths if you use them at a high octave. Spe especially 808s and other sine wave sounds. I'm sorry, let me pick a synth real quick.
go with that for now. Create a quick little pattern here just for <coughs> the sake of chorus. And we'll just keep it like that, keep it simple. Except for whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry, I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, I know this isn't a great beat, this isn't the greatest tutorial ever, but uh, it's already at 45 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this video and uh, let me know what you guys think. Rate, subscribe. Um, I'll definitely be adding more tutorials if you guys like them. Comment, let me know what you think. Talk about any tutorials that you guys want to hear. If you want to check me out, I'm at uh, soundcloud.com slash DJ underscore Oracle. Or you can find me anywhere on the web, Oracle Audio. I live in Cincinnati, Ohio. Peace.